Well, sir, uh, Janet McKenzie was unable to provide me with an address, so a uh, broadcast was made along with a newspaper appeal, and uh, he came in and saw me. I see. And on October the uh, 20th, uh, when arrested, uh, what did the prisoner say? He replied, okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Now, you say the room had the appearance of a uh, burglary <coughs> having been committed. That, that is just what the inspector did not say. As your lordship remembers, that was a suggestion made by my learned friend, and quite improperly made, to which I object. You are quite right, Sir Wilford. At the same time, I am not sure the inspector is not entitled to give evidence of any facts which might tend to prove the disorder of the room was not the work of a person who broke in from the outside for the purpose of robbery. <laughs> my lord, may I respectfully agree with what my lordship has said? Uh, facts, yes, but not the mere expression of an opinion, without even the facts on which it is based. <clears throat> uh, perhaps, my lord, if I phrase my question in this way, my friend would be satisfied. Now, Inspector, could you say from what you saw whether there had or had not been a bona fide breaking in from outside of the house? Really, my lord, I must continue my objection. My learned friend is again attempting to, to get an opinion from this witness. Yes, Mr. Myers, I think you will have to do a little better than that. And, uh, Spectre, uh, did you uh, find anything uh, inconsistent with the breaking in from the outside? Uh, only the glass. Only the glass. Nothing else? Nothing else. I see. We all seem to have drawn a blank there, Mr. Myers. Uh, was that, was this friend wearing jewelry of any value? Well, sir, she was wearing a uh, diamond brooch, two diamond rings of a value of approximately 900 pounds. And uh, these were left untouched? Uh, yes, sir. Was, was in fact anything taken? Uh, according to Janet McKenzie, nothing was missing. And in your experience, Inspector, when someone breaks in from outside of a house, uh, do they usually uh, leave without taking anything? Uh, not unless they've been interrupted. But it does not seem as if the burglar was interrupted, was it? No, sir. Uh, do you uh, produce a jacket, Inspector? Yes, sir. Is uh, this it? Yes, sir. Uh, from where did you get it? It came from the prisoner's flat sometime after he was arrested, and uh, I turned it over to uh, Mr. Clegg at the lab to uh, test for possible blood stains. Uh, lastly, Inspector, do you produce the will of Miss Emily Fred? I do. Dated uh, October the 8th? <coughs> yes, sir. After uh, certain bequests, the uh, residue is uh, left to the prison, is it not? That is so. And what is the uh, net value of that state? Uh, at the moment, uh, as much as we can ascertain, it is value of that state is approximately 85,000 pounds. Now, Inspector, you, you, you say the only fingerprints you found in the room were those of Miss French herself, the prisoner, and, and Janet McKenzie. Is, is that right? Uh, in your experience, uh, when a burglar breaks in, does he usually leave fingerprints or does he wear gloves? He wears gloves. Invariably. Almost invariably. So the absence of fingerprints in the case of a robbery would hardly uh, surprise you. No, sir. Now, these, these chisel marks on the window, were they on the inside or the outside of the casing? They were on the outside, sir. And that is consistent, and only consistent, with the breaking in from the outside. Well, sir, he, he could have gone out afterwards and uh, made those marks, or he could have done it from the inside. From the inside, Inspector? And how could he have possibly done that? Well, sir, uh, both windows are together, uh, they're both in casements. And both catches are adjacent. It would have been very easy for anyone in the room to just open the window, lean out, and force the catch of the other. Uh, tell me, uh, was there any chisel found near the premises or at the prisoner's flat? Uh, at the prisoner's flat, sir. Oh? Uh, but it didn't match the marks on the window. Uh, yes. Well, now, it was a windy night that night, was it not, on October the 14th? I really don't remember, sir. According to my learned friend, Janet McKenzie said that the curtains were blowing wildly. Uh, perhaps you remember that fact yourself. Oh, yes, sir. They, they were blowing about. 
indicating it was a windy night. <laughs> yes. Now, I suggest that if a burglar had forced the window from the outside and, and, and swung it back, some of the loose glass might have easily fallen down outside the window, the window having been blown back violently by the wind. That is possible, is it not? Possible, yes. Now, uh, crimes of violence, as we are all unfortunately aware, have been much on increase lately. You would agree with that, would you not? Yes, they've been a bit above normal, sir. Yes. Now, let us take the case uh, that some young thugs had broken in who meant to attack Miss French and Steele. If one of them had cost her in the head and then they found her dead, they might give way to panic and leave without taking anything. Or what? They might have been looking for money and, and would have been afraid to take anything in the nature of jewelry. <coughs> I submit that it is impossible for an inspector to guess what went on in the minds of some entirely hypothetical young criminals which may not even exist. Now, the prisoner came forward on his own accord and gave his statement quite willingly. Yes, sir. And it has been the case at all times that he has protested his innocence. Yes, sir. Now, Inspector, uh, would you uh, kindly examine that knife? You have seen that knife before. I may have. This is the knife taken from the kitchen table from Leonard Bowles flat and which was brought to your attention by the prisoner's wife on your first interview of her. Uh, my lord, to save the time of the court, may I submit that that is the knife in the possession of Leonard Bowl and shown to the inspector by Mrs. Bowl? That is correct, is it not, Inspector? Yes, sir. Now, I believe that is what is known as a, uh, a French vegetable knife. I believe so, sir. Now, could you just test the edge of that knife with your finger carefully? Now, you would agree that the, the cutting edge and the point are razor sharp. Yes, sir. So, so if one was cutting something, uh, uh, say a ham, carving it, that is, and, and your hand slipped with that knife, it would be capable of inflicting a nasty cut and one which would bleed profusely. I object. That is a matter of opinion and medical opinion of that. I withdraw the question. I will ask you instead, Inspector, did the prisoner upon your asking him about the stains on the sleeve of this jacket, draw your attention to a recently healed scar on his wrist and tell you that it had been caused by a household knife while he was slicing ham. Yes, sir. And you were told the same thing by the prisoner's wife. The first time, but after... A simple yes or no, please. Did the prisoner's wife show you that knife and tell you that he had cut his wrist with it while slicing ham? Yes, sir. Uh, Inspector, uh, well, what first uh, drew your attention to this jacket? Well, sir, the uh, sleeves appear to have been washed. And uh, you were subsequently told this uh, story about the accident with the kitchen knife? Yes, sir. And you later observed a uh, scar on the prisoner's wrist? Yes, sir. Granted that that scar was made by that particular knife, there was no way to tell for certain whether this wound had been done deliberately or even, say, possibly accidentally. Really, my lord, I must object. If my learned friend is, is going to answer his own questions, the presence of the witness seems to be superfluous. <coughs> I withdraw the question. <laughs> Thank you, Inspector. Call Dr. White. Dr. White? <coughs> I swear by Almighty God that the, the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> You are Dr. White? Yes. You are a police surgeon attached with the Hampstead Division? Yes, yes. Will you calmly tell the jury your findings on the death of Miss Emily French? At 11 p.m. on October 14th, I saw the dead body of a woman who, who subsequently proved to be Miss French. By examination of the body, I was in the opinion that Death had resulted from a blow to the head, 
You're living by an object.